Hello everybody, uh, this is Dean from Motion Media and today I just want to take a quick look at how to set up the um, hair plugin for Max uh, and uh, so that you would be able to use it with V-Ray. So I'm going to make a sphere okay, and then we're just going to add the hair and fur modifier and you see we immediately get results here. I'm going to put this in shaded mode for a second. Um, so let's see what I've got here. So I'm already in V-Ray. All right. Let's, uh, I'm just going to use a preset here. All right. And we're going to turn this on. All right. And then let's quickly create a V-Ray camera. And with that camera selected, I'm going to highlight the perspective view, hit Control C. That matches the camera to the perspective, and then hit C. Now we're looking through the camera. Nice little trick. I'm going to create a V-Ray light, just a standard square light. And then I'm going to use Place Highlight here. Oops. I think I need to turn that off. All right, select my light and use place light highlight here, and we're going to position the light something like that. I'm going to use the local axis to just pull it back a little bit out of our view. All right, we'll make it invisible. Let's turn it up just a little bit. Okay, so nothing major. I'm just using the defaults, except I turned up the light. Um, all right, so if we render this, I'm going to turn down the resolution here just for a second so we can go a little quicker. Uh, 960. All right. And then hit render here. Turn on my... Oh, yeah, I want to change this. Okay. So you can see uh, we get nothing. All right. And uh, that is because we have to make a few changes other than the default uh, enabled uh, uh, in order to see the hair results in V-Ray. So for starters, we need to go to the hair and fur plugin in the effects uh, section of the environment. And we need to change it from buffer to mental ray primitive. And let's just hit render. So now we're getting results. However, they are a bit slow. So I'm going to pause this here, stop it. Uh, one thing I'd like to do as well is choose the sphere <clears throat> and let's put a standard V-Ray material on it and make it a bit darker to kind of help with the self-shadowing. All right. The other thing that is recommended is that uh, if we um, inside the uh, hair plugin, we're going to instead of using the material controls, which is part of what's making it take longer, we're going to apply uh, a V-Ray um, hair material. Okay, we'll just call this V-Ray hair. I'll have to spell it right. And we're just going to drag and drop this well, after we turn it on, of course. Uh, drag and drop this on here and use it as an instance. So whatever changes we make in the materials, editor are transferred. And uh, so let's do, uh, you know, I don't know, brown shiny. No, no, no. Let's do blonde. Partial, I guess. Uh, we're going to leave all these things at the default and just hit render. Um, so, you know, this is not uh, imperfect, uh, you know, it works pretty good. Uh, I, I think if you compare the, the V-Ray render of the Max here to the uh, standard renderer or the default renderer of the Max here, I think the default renderer in this case actually does a, a little bit of a better job. Maybe it looks a little bit more realistic. Um, however, you can get some really good results with the V-Ray. Okay, so there you go. It's finished. And, uh, you know, fairly quick compared to the standard renderer, which does take a lot longer. 
Um, but I would say, uh, you know, the biggest problem with it is how it handles the edges, uh, which, you know, you can make some changes here to, to uh, soften that a bit. Um, but overall, pretty straightforward, easy to convert it, and easy to use it. I do, of course, uh, like uh, the fact that you can style it, and that's really important if you're going to use it for a character. Um, that's the biggest advantage there of why you'd want to use it. Now, uh, I'm going to, just to show a comparison, let's remove that hair. Uh, let's delete this, and let's apply uh, the V-Ray. Um, let's see here. Under Primitives, go to V-Ray, and let's use V-Ray Fur. And we're going to apply the V-Ray Shader to that. Let's just hit render. Again, I'm not doing anything. This is just the default. Um, I do like the V-Ray Fur. Uh, it's good for a lot of things, um, I think, probably, except for a person's hair, only because um, there aren't any styling tools. Uh, however, they do give you maps that you could control the length. So, you know, theoretically, you could go in and make different sections of a person's hair and try to control it with maps. Um, you know, I'm not saying that's impossible, but um, it certainly would be challenging, a little more challenging, uh, or maybe less intuitive than actually uh, being able to uh, style it. But nonetheless, it's good. You can see it rendered re very fast, and uh, again, the default looks pretty good. And, you know, it works for grass and, and other things, maybe on animals where you have more of a, a uniform type feel, but, um, but it looks really good. So I hope this was helpful. And uh, we will see you again soon. Thanks.